Hello there, great person. Welcome back to Let's Dive Into Warhammer 40k. So yesterday, the day before yesterday, we had a video by Major Kill, and it was not a deep dive, it was just a shallow dive. Which, yeah, that was something. So anyway, I'm back to Luiten now. <laughs> because, like, the, the org video was a bit shallow. Um, I liked his style, don't get me wrong. I like, there were, there were parts I really enjoyed of his video, but um, I think because I want lore and I want to get the basics, um, I should probably look out for more in-depth videos. Um, so the plan is I will do Tyranids now, um, and uh, then I will do the Tau, and then I will go into stuff we vote for. But I will probably do the Bricky video, because like everyone wants me to do that, I will do that. And I will uh, know some stuff about the universe then, and uh, it won't be... I will at least get the joke. So anyway, today we've got the Tyranids, this one's called the Tyranids. Devourer of Worlds. Um, yeah, and uh, let's just go into this. And if you like the original video, if you like Luton's narration, go there, like his video, link is in the description. And if you like this video, like it as well. And uh, yes, I will do a more in-depth orc dive later because, yeah, it was a bit too shallow. So I will do that down the line, definitely. Um, I, I think I got some, some parts of the orcs, like... The gist, um, but now we go to Tyrants. Can't wait. Let's have some fun. Uh, have some fun and let's go. Though never a verdant world, the lifeless ball of rock that we discovered was unrecognizable as, as Tyrant Primus. Okay. The creatures that did this are a threat to the galaxy and must be exterminated by the light of the God Emperor himself. Okay. Inquisitor Cryptman. Cryptman, okay, he's called Cryptman. Okay, you're so cryptic, Cryptman. Let's go. Let's have some let's have some fun on Tyron. And the ominous voice uh, sounds start. Will we get the great Tyranids or not? Yes we will. See it was promised to me and I get it now. There are many horrors facing humanity in the 41st millennium. Oh, yes. Few that rival the physically nightmarish alien race known as the Tyranids. The Tyranids. Also known as the Great Devourer. Ah, there is one. There is one. Hello, Tyranid man or woman. And I'm judging. Tyranids are a Xenos race best described as a bioformic ecosystem. All have Okay, yeah, like I know that. Like just, just, just to get this out of the way, I know a bit of the lore because I've read up on it like ten years ago. I already said that, you know, like I know there are Herma guns, some other guns, and Biovores and Carnifexa. Those are the big ones, I think. And there are zoanthropes, the the weird things, like they are like this. I don't know if that was a zoanthrop sound, but yeah. So, sorry. Just wanted to get that out of the way. So it's not completely blind, I guess, but we'll see. Have genetically similar elements, but regularly diverge and evolve. Yeah, Unlike right, most they, races the in the galaxy, evolve. the Tyranids have yeah. no social or ideological goal. Their goal is survival. Eating. Collectively, okay, they form sorry. fleets of these bioforms known as hive fleets, or biomechanical structures known as hive ships. They move through systems stripping planets of biomatter like locusts, then using this collective matter, they fuel their further evolution and expansion. Great. This rapid development enables Tyranids to make astounding leaps in evolution that would take other species millions of years to complete. Tyranids share a powerful ability in that form of the hive mind. This enables them to share uh. information, react and make large-scale decisions near instantaneously from the masses of forms that make up their collective. They Okay, so they've got a hive mind. I knew that. Um, but what I don't know is, so we get into territory already that I don't know anything about, is do they have queens? Like normally these um, insect type um, living swarm type things in science fiction and fiction do have a queen that you have to destroy. Um, and because that would be easy, I don't think they will have one. But I think they might have something like uh, queens. Like, you know, 
several hive ships or whatever, and then they will have queens, like the wraith from uh, Stargate, I guess. They also have a common psychic bond they look known so good. as the synapse. This enables them to move and coordinate with other tyranids around them as if one greater organism. Uh, the behavior so cool. likened more to the conscious and unconscious muscle contractions of a larger entity than actual individual behavior. The reactive movement of flocks of birds causing a uh. natural spatial shifting is not entirely unlike the way in which the tyranid synapse behaves. Okay, I'm sorry to get in here as a physicist. I, you know, uh, there are... I'm sorry, just an aside, there are um, some of my colleagues try to um, describe swarms with mathematics because um, they, um, they, they, they apply chaos theory there, if I recall correctly, and uh, they can actually do model stuff like um, uh, sometimes when you're with um, lightning, lightning, lightning bugs, lightning bugs, I don't know what, what exactly they're called, like these glow, glow bugs, um, so they like blink. And they all blink in unison. And how can you? How can they do that? Like how can they coordinate? And they do research on the thread, um, and they uh, discovered that you can describe it via chaos theory. And it's very interesting. I'm not going to go deeper into it, but just just a just a side. So it's like physics acting, like a swarm is like physics acting in the world uh, through nature, which is pretty cool. Like through living nature. This collective reactionary cooperation is especially important when you consider that Tyranid's approach to warfare is simply often to overwhelm through weight of numbers, yeah. a tidal wave of seething, vicious, corrosive biomass. Yeah, they, uh, they do have corrosives. I remember from somewhere that you can um, evolve like acid sex or whatever and then they can spit acid. Is that, is that, is that how it works? I, I know you can uh, modify their little figures with little <laughs> little knives, knife, knife thingies and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I almost know nothing, but I know that. Oh. With numbers beyond estimation. There, there it is. There it is. There it is. Is that a zoanthrope th thing? This, this here? This? I think that's a zoanthrope. You know, you know what I mean. He'll probably tell me, oh, they are so cool. They are so Geiger-esque. I love them. Forming the I want one. I, I, I don't know. I will probably not buy Tyranids, I think, currently. I, I have some ideas of what I want to buy down the line, but it's probably not going to be Tyranids. But this thing, I would love one. When it fleets, the so hive cool. mind is critically important, as the <laughs> organisms sentient or otherwise who compromise the Tyranids would just return to a state of rapid Ooh, disorder and, there is, uh, and survivalist whatever thing. instincts without some intrinsic link to keep them focused and organized. Okay, so that was a lictor, wasn't it? The the stealth thing? Isn't that the stealth thing? Stealth thing that's stealthy and stabby steps? <laughs> I don't know. And there are there were little bird bat things. I have never seen those. Unlike many species in the 41st and this is millennium, the Tyranids are far from xenophobic. In fact, they actively seek genetic transfer of material across species. Mate, you can't say... <laughs> They are xenophiles, and that's why they eat everyone. They love them so much, they want to make them their own. That's, that's so funny, actually. I like that. They will absorb and utilize any useful genetic traits oh, they discover God, what in are life you? forms or what on is worlds that thing? I've never seen it. This information will then be used to improve their effectiveness either in biomatic consumption and efficiency or combat. All Tyranids are produced from a single life form within the Hive fleets known as the Norn Queen. Ha! I knew it. I knew they had something like that. I knew it. It was, it was so obvious. So hello Norn Queen. Um, is there a Queen Queen? Or is there, like, where did they come from? Why? Why are they? Without this bioform, they, they would be unable to continue to replenish their forces. Much like any life form that lives in a colony, the queen is to be found at the center, where she is most difficult to reach and most well defended. Naturally. She essentially not only reproduces, but bioengineers the life forms in oh, turn. God, look at that weird thing coming out of her, you know what, her V. Um, yeah, let's call it V. Swarm. 
The queens will also relay information to one another psychically through oh. the hive mind and enable them to create better suited or more powerful life forms. They also transmit orders and information to the lesser entities. In order so is the is the webway thing I mean it's not the webway, but they, they seem to communicate what and how. Are they using warp strings? Like what are they using? I still have the theory, um, uh, the hypothesis, the hypothesis that the warp is just part of a bigger like reality shaping field and that all the different races have access to parts of it and most of them have um, um, access to it through what they call the warp because it's emotion, like the human emotion stuff, but there are others more primal things like the orcs and more primal primal things like the tyranids perhaps, I don't know. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if that might be something that could be um, just guessing, of course. In order to continue reproduction of the Tyranid bioforms, the Norn Queens require a constant supply of biomass. And this is literally pumped from a planet that has been harvested by a Tyranid swarm back to their hive ships in Lovely. orbit. Disgusting reclamation pools are formed on the planet's surface where all biomass is dissolved together collectively. At, they, at least they're not living furniture, they're just living goo. The queen will then continually produce new tyranid forms in a variety of ways, from eggs to live birth, larvae, or grown in amniotic sacs. Most forms produced, though, do require further nurture from a worker class, ah, who, as with most so cool. colony life forms, provide them with the nutrition and care needed until they can survive for themselves. In the case of tyranids, this usually happens very quickly. The most significant encounters with the Tyranids have occurred relatively recently, and in the scheme of things they are a fairly new threat, having first been truly encountered around 745 in Millennium 41. But rumours and fragments of information can potentially trace their impacts to anything in the region of the 35th Millennium or before. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought they were like um, encountered at this battle of um, something something where they encountered space marines. Um, I don't remember more than that. But that there are like hints to them from before is pretty bad as I like that a lot. They're believed to have been attracted to the galaxy due to the Emperor's psychic beacon, the Astronomicon, okay. which acts as a lighthouse for Imperial ships traveling ah, the warp. That makes Imperial sense, navigators okay. use it to calculate their courses through dangerous warp space. The first major incursion by the Tyranids was Hive Fleet Behemoth, which after causing catastrophic damage on countless worlds, was ultimately repelled by the Ultramarines chapter. But this battle was barely a victory, the losses so high they would take hundreds of years to replenish and recover from. Um, Hive Fleet Behemoth, was that the Tyranid fleet? I didn't really get that, but I assume it was. And those are a lot of... What did he say? Some kind of space marines? And they look pretty cool. Like I like the blue, I like the Omega symbol. Um, and I like that there are so many and they're probably all going to be mauled away by uh, like, like biote, uh, whatever you call it, by Tyranids. These events gave a worrying glimpse to the Imperium of the power wielded and damage that could be inflicted from a Tyranid hive fleet. It's feared and suspected that much worse is even to come, and the Tyranids have really only begun to scout through the galaxy. Space travel, yeah, how do they Tyranid do that? Tyranid hive fleets and their subsequent tendrils Ooh. move quickly through systems. Con tendrils, is that the name of these weird Kraken-like ships? Or, or I don't know what the English word is. In, in German it would be Kalmar, but um, I don't know the English word. It might be ca 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 Calamari. Is that something? Perhaps that word does not exist, but these, like, these, um, they are uh, invertebrates that are long, like, have big eyes and have these blah, 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 tentacles like octopi. You know what I mean? I don't know what their name is. It looks like that. Uh, like, almost like, ah, you know what I really like? It looks like a deep sea creature. And they all look a bit like deep sea creatures, and deep sea creatures are these strange alien things like it parallels that a bit i like that that they took inspiration from deep sea creatures here perhaps all of them are close to those but i would yeah i mean because perhaps in space it's it's, it's similar perhaps in very harsh places of space things like uh, develop like parallel to the deep sea creatures perhaps that's a thing 
But like that would be a cool idea at least, you know, but very cool. Consuming all biomatter, but they never enter the warp, nor do they possess actual faster than light technology in the standard sense. They instead use psychic powers of a specialized hive ship known as a narval that manipulates gravity fields of any Seriously? star system they are in to achieve faster than light travel. Okay, so they basically use real warp. Like everyone else travels through hyperspace and calls it warp and these ding-dongs here, they ban space-time, which is like technically real warp. Like the warp we have or we are currently doing research on is warp like that. So... The novel ships are more scouting than oh, combat man, focused and they use clusters of monofilaments to assess electromagnetic and gravimetric information. This enables them to detect the direction and location of new systems containing potential biomatter for the fleet. The details on how the novel ships actually use this are not clear, but in essence what may happen here is the novel somehow create a huge gravity well, enabling the fleet to then move at speeds equivalent to fast and light tech as used by the Imperium. This huge distortion of gravity has a devastating impact though on inhabited planets in the system with the gravity well causing cores of planets to swell, creating subsequent earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions and any number of damaging consequences. Yeah, it would basically like shoot planets out of their orbit, which is not fun. It's like if a black hole would pass through a system, small one, but it would disrupt everything, like it would F everything up. So scary, so scary. The Timonid fleet then essentially fall oh, through this compression, hello. allowing them to reach their destinations at immense speed. The physics of this are all pretty spurious, but not much more than anything else around this kind of travel. The one problem for Timonids is that on arriving after traveling through the gravity well, they are then only capable of sub-light speeds. And so this can mean that they will still take many years or even decades to actually reach their final destination. Okay. If they're able to be detected in time, this window may give whatever worlds they're headed for time to prepare, evacuate or call for defensive reinforcements. Better evacuate. The all-encompassing effect of the psychic hive mind of the Tyranids forms a phenomena known as the shadow in the warp. This smothers and envelops whole star systems. Oh. Whenever a Tyranid fleet is near, this effect will become apparent oh. as psychers will struggle to manifest their abilities. Navigation and communication become nearly impossible. Yeah, that's what I think. Like, like warp is not everything there is. Like, warp is not all of the immaterium field. Let's call it immaterium field. I know immaterium is a warp and it's the same in the lore, but let's call it what I mean immaterium field or whatever. And I think Tyranids are part of it. They are part of it, but Tyranids have a stronger influence on it and can disrupt it through, yeah, whatever. Or perhaps because they can use gravity, they can distort it. Like... I don't know. For the Imperium, this apparently ambient effect of the Tyranid race is especially devastating as they rely on psychic communications heavily. If a planet becomes enveloped by this effect, they will unlikely be able to call for help and are then left with the sobering prospect of facing the inevitable Tyranid swarm alone. Great. The Imperium perceives the Tyranid fleets as separate forces competing with one another for resources, much like any other organism of the same species will compete with their own really? for resources. Really? No. However, in reality, this is not the case. The oh, Tyranids, through yeah. their hive mind, form a much more complex construction of organisms. Perhaps the most terrifying fact about the Tyranids, uh -huh. though, is their drone-like single focus. Much like any large predators looking into those that black, so cool. black eyes, you know that they have no feelings about their actions, only that they know what they must do, and their instincts and synapse-led instructions from the hive mind tell them all they need to know. The strength of the hive mind and its localized area of effect will actually wax and wane, but it's strongest around some of the more significant bioforms like Tyranid warriors, hive tyrants, which will cause this amplification effect of the hive mind. Without these synaptic linchpins, many of the lesser Tyranid forms would actually revert to unfocused animalistic behaviors. But okay, so the hive tyrants... I think I've heard that before, but I don't remember. So they are basically walking um, 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 Wi-Fi stations. 
<laughs> for the hive mind. I, I like that. That's cool. For that reason, there is no one commander within a Tyranid force most often, but multiple senior forms that secure the network of the hive mind uniting and focusing the lesser forms. This synapse link bonds Tyranids together like an invisible rubber banding effect. Why does that Tyranid have, have, a, have a giant machete? Ma, 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 you know what I mean? Why? That, that looks wild. I love it. <laughs> he just was like, oh, let me take this big thing. <laughs> you, you, you take it. Okay, now the Tyranid, um, whatever this is. Is that a Carnifex? I don't know. Let's say it's a Carnifex. This Carnifex is like, I'm now an orc. Let's take big thing and hit people. <laughs> The larger warriors and tyrants are capable of some level of decision making, although this is still relative to their role within the hive mind, and is much more reactionary or preemptively instinctual than actually tactical. With that said, they can learn and react from their enemy, which can again give the impression that they are actually reacting to that, but it's a more kind of genetic instinct. The whole thing is more a chorus of chaotic input that runs through specialized synapse entities who act as hubs to convey and facilitate the distribution and collection of yeah. this mass synaptic data. These creatures, though, are undoubtedly powerful psychic organisms, and any Dude, psychic just... entity of power usually will attract attention from the dark beings who reside within the warp, and this has been established for a long time. They look so cool. I mean, look at that thing. Isn't that cool? The Zorn Thor Thor thing. So cool. But why is it then that the Tyranid Psychers seem not to attract the nightmarish beings from within the warp when the opposite is true for almost all other races? It simply is a mystery. Because they use a different part of the Immaterium field. See? My hypothesis also can explain stuff. I already can explain stuff. Great. Bioengineering. Tyranids use a unique <laughs> method of control. He looks a bit too dopey, I have to admit. Like, he looks like a very, very crossfire ant. And he's got a, a skimtar. Great. Don't know where he got that from. Like, I mean, oh, he's got two. Oh, I'm, I'm blind. He's got two skimtars. Why, mate? Like, <laughs> all the power to you, I guess. Construction to create their ships, weapons, and general mechanical requirements. This means that they do not need to be concerned with locating metals or fabrication of plastics. Instead, as with everything, they utilize biomass collected from the worlds that they ravage. This biomass is then genetically engineered to grow the structures or components they require. This means that everything they use or inhabit is in essence a part of the Tyranid collective, down to the smallest glands or connective tissues right through to gargantuan bioengineered starships. Yeah. The very worst of their creations are of course the combat-focused entities. To a human, they embody everything that is Xenos. They Yes, I mean, they are just Xenos things storming into your house, or your garden, or your planet. They are literal nightmares made real. While they do possess ranged weapons, many Tyranid creatures are fighters and melee focused. A great deal of Tyranid weaponry are these creatures' own teeth and claws, but simply bioengineered to appalling degrees of effectiveness. These claws will slice clean through all but the toughest armor and eviscerate their enemies in seconds. They also carry ranged bio cannons firing invasive venomous parasitic projectiles that will burrow into the flesh of their enemy, being very much as yeah. unpleasant as it yeah, sounds. Yeah, you do that too. They usually cool. also fire a good shower of acidic poison as well that will melt and uh, dissolve God, through almost why? anything, including the armor that. of a wearer in seconds. Suddenly, normal projectile weapons don't seem quite so bad. Often as well, Tyranids do not carry their weapons in the strictest sense. More, they are usually fused extensions of their own bodies, yes, creating an appalling parody of form. Some will have spines on their bodies that can also expel and impale their targets, pinning them in place or just dismembering them where they stand. Most Tyranid weapons conform to this formula of sharp implements or acidic spray. Some creatures, though, like the Lictors, will fire tendrils with razor-sharp hooks, pulling the hapless enemy into close range of its powerful claws, whereupon it would obviously be torn to pieces. Oh, so Lictors are like Urgot. Isn't Urgot the one from League of Legends that pulls things and then shreds it? Or them? 
Yeah, I, I think so. Why? And this this dude here, he's got a gun. Like, that's a normal gun. That's not a bio gun. He just took a gun. <laughs> it's so funny. Some Tyranid creatures like the Termagants will fire live creatures from their bio weapons. The oh, Termagant's great. Flesh Borer is one such weapon. And as the name implies, it fires beetles that unpleasantly bore through armor and into the flesh and beyond. <laughs> unpleasantly bore into your soul and body great how do you do that pleasantly that, that's so stupid the weapons like the shock cannon fire sinews much like a taser and then electrocute their targets with bioelectric pulse that's energy so cool. another interesting so weapon cool. in the tyranid arsenal are the barbed strangler seed pods these are fired out and then upon impact grow to maturity in seconds with barbed tendrils reaching out in all directions trapping strangling eviscerating anything they come into contact with Oh god, that's so disgusting. Tyranids even have bio mines, known as spore mines, and these are automatically triggered when a non-tyranid comes into close proximity. These mines are not embedded in the those. ground, but rather float around after being deployed until they come near a target and activate. As with most mines, mechanical or otherwise, the detonation releases in spore mines a nasty cocktail of acid, toxic gas and chitin shrapnel with relative consequences to Great. the target. Now, Tyranids obviously do not wear armor in the normal sense. Yeah, but they've got these bone plates and stuff, don't they? As with everything, they have bioengineered reinforced carapaces or body shells. Larger organisms will also likely have strengthened exoskeletons. Yeah. These yeah, armored yeah. shells turn their wearer from bio machine to bio tank form. Yes. These shells are harder than Imperial Ceramite, and only the heaviest anti vehicle weaponry is going to be able to begin to scratch the surface. It's so Smaller tunic forms will sport strengthened chitin, and this is more akin to a tough, high than a bone-like carapace. This is the standard for the smaller, more disposable organisms in a Tyranid swarm and will only really prevent melee attacks and small weapons fire. Anything more and its defensive abilities are actually going to be pretty limited. The okay, great, so you can shoot some. Like, take take great flamethrowers and just torch most of them. Larger creatures will, though, have a chitin covering a carapace. This can cover sections or all of the <laughs> creature and is much more effective at protecting the tyranid organism that use this form of protection. On top of these natural defenses and bioweapons, tyranids also have plenty of attributes, offensive and defensive, that they wield as part of their own bodies. Acid being pretty common among tyranids yes. with acidic jaws, spitting Burn venom that consumes acid. and dissolves enemies in seconds. Chameleonic skin also allows some tyrannids to stealthily blend into surroundings to launch ambush attacks on passing enemy. Enhanced neural senses enable tyrannids yeah. to detect hidden enemy using tech to cover their appearance or location. And yeah, I remember that. Aren't those the lictors as well? Powerful leaping appendages allow them to fly into battle, crushing enemies in the process. Many have increased regenerative abilities that enable the fast healing of even catastrophically severe wounds. Some Tyranids simply just possess very spiky and thorny carapaces, so when they charge into battle, any enemy not already physically crushed will be lacerated or impaled by the creature's own surrounding body armor. A thorax swarm is another particularly nasty contained weapon some Tyranids feature. In their swollen chest cavities, many creatures are amassed, a bulging swarm of parasitic creatures. And when Great. in proximity of the enemy, this thorax sac will just erupt in a huge burst, throwing the parasites hurtling towards and drowning the unwitting victims in thousands of these smaller, very aggressive tyranid forms. Great. Yeah, so you, like, it's, it's as if they um, throw scarabs at them or whatever they're called, like these things from the mummy. These will then proceed to crawl inside armor, down enemies' throats, and chew through eyes and exterior flesh. Great. They will then Great emit stuff. either arcs of electricity, charring their victims, or suck all the moisture out of their body, desiccating them in seconds, or just climb in and around the bodies of the enemy, exploding with needles of chitin, uh, literally bleeding them to death. Great. Great. In general, Lovely. Tyranid forms Lovely. are sharp, acidic, and hazardous in general to your health. But it's not just the small life forms. The living ships themselves also have offensive and hazardous attributes. They will generally feature the common acidic weapons that will burn through the hull of enemy ships and ordnance that will actually burrow its way inside of enemy vessels to then launch smaller Tyranids from these. 
Small or large, all Tyranids are formed from the reconstituted biomatter of their unwilling victims. Great. Spliced to so you will become one of them, isn't that lovely? Together and reformed in their own image, part of the horror is not simply that uh. they will destroy you and everything you know, but that all of this and yourself will become Tyranid in a horrific parody of form and evolution. Oh yeah. Invasion tactics and planetary harvesting. Isn't it just like flood, flood the planet and then eat it? The Tyranid's main means oh, of acquiring wow. new biomatter is, as previously mentioned, to secure a planet and then proceed to forcibly rape the land of all its life forms and resources, in usually a wholly unpleasant process. Let's see what that entails. Now firstly, the Tyranids will, for want of a better word, recon the world they intend to harvest. They will instigate initial stages of infection by deploying Tyranid species known as Lictors, also gene stealers and vanguard drone ships. Okay, I never knew that. Okay, so they put in Lictors because they are like stealthy, aren't they? These creatures focus mainly on concealment and stealth, but are undoubtedly still horrific and dangerous in their viciousness. They'll also unusually focus on staying alive, as opposed to in later full-blown assaults, which are much more like a tidal wave of tyranid form, yeah. literally clogging the enemy with acidic death. These species are also unusual compared oh, to so most cool. main assault tyranid lifeforms because of their independence. They exhibit more self-awareness and more situational choices than the swarms that will likely follow. This has no doubt been decided as the most effective course of action and behavior for these Earth That really looks like if it's like at the gas station. <laughs> that looks pretty funny. But he's scouting tyranids. The Vanguard drone ships are simply the transportation for these early scouts. They are small, independent ships and only will periodically return back to the main Hive Fleet vessels. Lictors are the masters of stealth. Using feeder tendrils, they analyze all the environmental elements and constituent biomatter that is available to them. They may also choose to kill and devour life forms to absorb their memories, as is one of the oh. Tyranid traits. Memories? That's harsh. That's pretty harsh. These memories may give them further relevant information or acquire locations to explore. Gene stealers, though, will not simply acquire biomatter intel, they will also begin the infection of the Tyranid forms in the local ecosystem. This corruption will eventually result in the first Tyranid hybrid creatures from the planet's native species being formed. Uh, yeah, great. It's a bit like the thing, I feel. Like if the thing was a Tyranid thing that grew rampant on that stupid ship and then, yeah, yeah, that, that would make sense, you know, I, I, well, I, I feel like that would make sense. Once these initial recon periods are complete, the Tyranids will quickly switch their behavior from somewhat passive investigation to full-on planetary infestation and excessive aggression. A psychic call emitted to the swarm will alter the fleet and subsequently pull the hive ship toward the planet. Any humanoids on said planet at this time would be advised to panic. <laughs> Great stuff, yeah. Advice to panic. Because <laughs> infestation will now begin. That was so stupid. As the hive fleet draws near, it will, as previously stated, disrupt much if not all communication from the target planet yeah, yeah, yeah. and its inhabitants and they will dead. now be cut off from the wider systems surrounding it unable to call for help oh, or so give big. warnings to others any evacuations that can be made would probably be advised to do so but even they may not escape with the high fleet monitoring movement in and around their target planet even if ships were sent to counter and defend a planet, they may not be able to actually exit into warp space because of the Tyranid's psychic effect, the shadow in the warp. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense as well. Um, also, but couldn't they throw, like, take the ships and tow them into the sun? Uh, I mean, the, the planet's native sun, of course, but, like, just throw them into the, like, their binary system or whatever. Once arriving at the planet, mycetic spores are released into the atmosphere, raining down. Oh. And these spores seed the planet with microorganisms, which will alter and distort the planet's natural organic life forms. They also uh, begin to so break down disgusting. complex organic molecules and alter them to be more suitable for absorption by the swarm. 
This first, as one of many unpleasant processes, can affect unpleasant. complex and simple life forms. Meanwhile, other spores will actually contain the more complex tyranid life forms, and these will begin to group together, preparing to assault when commanded to do so. Others, though, will burrow underground, planting more spores that will then grow into capillary towers. These vast chitin oh, towers that looks raise very cool. up out of the ground and reach as high as the upper atmosphere. Wow. Reclamation pools will then appear near to them, linked via underground root systems. These towers will then later connect via the tubes from the hive ships to suck up biomatter from the planet. Capillary towers can grow almost anywhere. Environmental conditions seem to not affect them. The reclamation pools are the... How though? Oh yeah, they can warp gravity, so that's probably why they can grow everywhere, that makes sense. Unpleasant pools where all the planet's biomatter is gathered and broken down collectively. It's essentially a thick soup of dissolving life forms, both sentient and non, which the hive ships will then suck dry. Ugh. But Tyranids will not just reap the organic surface of a planet, but also its underground mineral wealth. I mean, so this initial infestation phase will mean creatures underground begin seeking and mining out a planet's mineral wealth to again be dissolved and consumed by the swarm. As this is all happening, the concealed infiltrators, the lictors and gene stealers, will now emerge, bursting from their hidden positions around the planet to attack anything that they have deemed to be oh. a vital defensive oh. system from their intelligence that collection looks dark efforts. And ominous. They may target senior leaders, officers, critical infrastructure, all are going to be prime targets. And these attacks will also start to cause fear, panic, confusion <laughs> yes, from further of course hindering they do. the planet's attempt to keep control of any kind of public order. Uh, look at them being rushed down. Assault. Once the Tyranids have begun this initial phase, it will not be long before the more severe and far more aggressive assault will begin. These initial stages, while terrifying and unsettling, are just a pale taste of what's to come. Swarms of Tyranid come? forms will thunder across the planet, slaughtering anything native that stands in their way. All the small forms like the gene stealers and those seeded like gaunts, gargoyles, etc. are going to be present, but Gaunt's gargoyles. Gaunt is someone I have heard in the comments about. Gaunt's ghost is something I will take a look at. I think it's called Gaunt's ghosts or something, but yeah. Now also will come the bigger forms, Carnifexes and Hierophants. Hierophants, what's that? Creatures. The capillary towers uh, will uh, also start to burst. Is that a Hierophant? It looks like a spider thing. It looks pretty bad as I like. That's pretty neat design from the planet's surface as well reaching up into the skies and vast swathes of tyranids scouring the planet. The towers will start to begin the process of consuming biomatter because there is no standing on ceremony for victory. And they're just like the the two, I think they're space marines, they're just like, oops, that, sound, that, that doesn't look so good, let's better leave. From the initial assault to the final exodus, the process of absorption and consuming biomatter will begin. The capillary towers themselves are far from inert systems, they'll actually throw out tendrils and tubules that can absorb life forms and native species. For more civilian planets, the Tyranids will usually just allow the gene stealers and gaunt genus to do most of the work. Termagants, though, will also make up this battle force, as will the Tyranid warriors, keeping the swarms coordinated and focused, relaying the hive mind among them. More heavily defended planets, however, are going to require more significant firepower, and the Tyranids unfortunately have this at their disposal. How do they know that the planet is very, very... Um populated or defended is it because they feel through their uh, immaterium field or whatever it's called we will call it immaterium field do they feel that there are many th minds there in the form of hierophants these bio titans are terrifying enemies towering over the battlefield they are some of the largest forms in the tyranid arsenal comparable in size to imperial titans Armed with some of the largest biocannons in the Tyranid weaponry, a large electrochemical discharge spews corrosive maggots that upon impact of any structure or enemy will, in combination with a highly corroding acid, will burn, burrow and dissolve whatever they come into contact with. In it reminds me so much of the Bucks and Starship Troopers. Inevitably reducing it to a pool of dissolving, screaming collapsed Oh, who's fighting something there. It also there. is supported cool. by heavy armoured chitin, as well as any number of blades and claws. Their own hide also exudes spores of poison, of course. and its belly scattered of course. with spined tendrils, 
lashing out and impaling any enemy who attempts to get close to just, it. Just, it can, just as with most everything. Tyranids, also rapidly evolve, even on the battlefield. He looks like Cthulhu, this, this dude. And yeah, it's pretty scary that they can evolve on the battlefield. Like, they can adapt to almost anything then. To adapt to whatever it might be faced with. Yeah. These assaulting forces are mainly suppressive in their objective. They're not there to collect or break down biomaterial for the hive, they are there to crush resistance to the swarm. All materials will be later collected with ease. One of the most efficient elements of the Tyranid Assault is that simply nothing is wasted. Death means very little to the Tyranid Swarm because any deaths will simply just be reabsorbed yeah, into the biomass. Of course, pool they will be. And then later reconstituted. This high level of efficiency and minimal waste explains why the Tyranids are more than happy to win battles through sheer weight of numbers with apparently little to any downside. Yeah, there's just zerging stuff. A worrying prospect to any force attempting to repel an enemy with no real appreciation for the horrors they're inflicting and certainly no moral compass of any kind. But then what does have a moral compass in the 41st millennium? Oh, they true are unrelenting well. and nearly unstoppable, an irresistible force of violent evolutionary design. As with the orcs, a planet suffering from this level of infestation is in a critical state. Even if arriving defenders were able to somehow destroy the Hive Fleet's main ship, the existing Tyranids on the planet's surface will cause ongoing devastation for potentially millennia to come. So Orcs versus Tyranids, who would win? I guess Tyranids because they can eternally reform? But the orcs are also pretty, like, yeah, I, I don't know. Tyranny planetary infections occur at a microbial level, so truly eradicating them can be nearly impossible, yeah. short of full-scale exterminatus. Yeah, you have to completely wipe life off the planet's surface and then uh, re-terraform it. Which would somewhat defeat the point of trying to save a colony or planet in the first place, but as the Imperium, you're probably certainly keeping that option on the table. Of course, naturally. The Downward Spiral. Yay. With much of the planet overrun with Tyranids and any defenders likely beginning to buckle if not already collapsing under the weight of nightmarish violence and body ruining acidic bioweaponry, the collection process for the planet's biomatter will now be well underway Begin. and the world now entering a downward spiral that it will struggle to if not already be unable to reverse. Yeah. Worse still, if a battle is proving especially challenging and continuing, the Tyranids will then start to utilize biomatter on the surface to form new new creatures and effectively use the planet against itself. Wow, that's so cool. That design, I mean, that they do that as well, like they, that they use the creatures against themselves, but that design of that the dude is like, without the eyes, it's pretty creepy, and then he's got this huge bio gun or whatever it is. It's so cool. Love it. Rippers will begin a swathe of foul oh, consummation, God, sweeping across the surface Tyranid and consuming wars. and devouring all matter in their sight. Once these rippers have had their fill, they will proceed to the biopores uh. around capillary towers. Yet instead of bringing up their consumed mass into the pool or depositing it by some other means of excretion, the rippers will shockingly throw themselves into the biopores to simply be dissolved and then consumed back into the biomass efficiency. of the hive fleet. That's efficient. This disturbing act demonstrates how the Tyranids hold little to any regard for their own individual entities and view their form as a singular collective, a whole organism one and the same. So wouldn't the Tau like that? Uh, don't they want to be the same as well? <laughs> that was a bad joke, I know. New rippers will be continually produced until the planet's matter is exhausted. Ocean, sea life, mineral wealth, surface fauna, it's all one and the same, will all be consumed. At this stage, the planet is now far beyond any hope of rescue or redemption and is essentially doomed at this point in time. Couldn't the Satan have, could the Satan have beaten them? And the Satan, the like... Um energy beings or something like that, so they might have like burnt them away, but I don't know. If the Imperium had the just option to do so, it. this would be the point to perform exterminatus on the planet. What is exterminatus? But it's just as likely that they wouldn't actually be able to reach or assist the no doubt highly traumatized scraps of remaining humanoids hidden somewhere underground in deep bunkers. 
If no action is taken, they may survive by chance, but more likely will be dug down to and extracted by the nightmarish alien. Extracted, that sounds so wrong in this. Oh, it's so, oh God. I hope there's going to be, you know, I say that every every reaction I say it, but I, I stand by it. I hope there will be a movie about this. I hope there will be a movie about a group on a planet that's overrun by the Turners and they try to flee. And they have to, like, perhaps use a captured elder or whatever to, to flee or whatever. That would be so cool. Force. Still, not all hope is lost in the grand scheme of things. A defensive move is possible at this point and would actually be somewhat useful. It would be entirely possible that the Tyranids at this juncture may be at a point where they have to expend more biomatter than they are yet to have been able to consume, meaning they're actually at a net loss in terms of their overall collection of biomatter. Yeah. So to launch an attack at this point would actually be tactically sound from a generally defensive point of view for other worlds in the system and may even mean that the Tyranid threat can either be repelled if not potentially defeated. The Tyranid's goal is always to gain more biomatter than they began an assault with, to profit from each encounter. Yeah, to leave I with see. less matter than they arrived would certainly not demoralize them, they have no concept of such a thing, but it would potentially slow down their reproduction of forms and possibly even make further assaults more survivable for oh, the planet. So, cool. so even though a singular planet may well be completely lost, for the Imperium or whoever is fighting back against the High Fleet, there is a real purpose to still fight and try to mitigate whatever damage they have inflicted in a larger sense. That's cool. So there is a, like, so you can fight them, but not directly. I like that. That's cool. And this is true of the wars and conflicts in the 41st millennium. They're often part of a larger picture, and so these efforts are not as pointless as they might appear yeah, to be. They could true. mean that future Tyranid assaults are successfully repelled before reaching a point of no return. Meanwhile though, Tyranid forms would be far from concerned with such grandiose concepts and instead be wholly focused on their task of extracting biomatter, an orgy of consummation continuing oh, across the again, entire planet. After the capillary towers are spread across the surface, the oceans and below ground, life forms and resources are being reaped from the subdued world, the Tyranids will then begin the process of absorbing the accumulated biomatter to their hive ship. <laughs> Tendrils are extended from the hive ship to connect with the capillary towers, which are now high in the atmosphere. Yeah, it's like they're fueling up. <laughs> it's so funny. And the biomatter from the stage, pools around the capillary towers will now be pumped up to the ship. But now comes a most shocking twist to the story. Once all the planet's defensive forces are completely destroyed, even the surviving Tyranid forces will begin to throw themselves suicidally into the digestive bio pools yeah, of course. surrounding the capillary towers. Of they are immediately broken down by the highly acidic liquids and devoured by the hive ship. I mean, that makes sense because they have to produce new ones and on the next planet. I mean, that makes perfect sense. All genetic material is consumed, their matter, memories and innovations as part of this planet's assault. Once all the biomatter has been pumped to the ship, the towers will begin to draw the water itself from the planet. Then the capillary towers themselves will begin to break down and be reabsorbed by the hive ship. Lastly, and perhaps most shockingly of all, even the planet's atmosphere is consumed by the hive oh, ship that's before pretty the final badass. capillary towers are reabsorbed. So it's just, so they just leave behind a rock. Great. That's so badass and so horrifying. Some Imperium biologists speculate the hive ships using unseen processes transform the planet's atmosphere into a solid matter state. As the Tyranid fleet slowly okay. begin to move away from the planet with their sub light speed limitations, left behind is a barren desert like rock. A ravaged um, and destroyed yeah. world that will likely never see life on its surface again, nor any installations as all resources have been extracted. As the yeah. Hive Fleet plan their next target, the time spent in between on the journey will be utilised in consolidating the information and new genetic profiles yeah, gathered from the last I devouring. See. This Very may lead clever. to the development of new bioforms or the improvement of existing ones, making the Tyranid either more combat effective or improving their harvesting efficiency. 
Because of the Tyranid psychic force that often prevents ships from exiting the warp in a system under assault by a high fleet, as they leave it may be that this is when Imperial forces first learn a world has been destroyed, uh, and with the utmost yeah. urgency, warnings and emergency action will attempt to be executed at this point. At least they know a general area where our Tyranids were. But no it's like um, this meme, the stars are going out, they're going out. No way of knowing their destination, Imperial forces will need to move swiftly if they're able to have any hope at all of repelling wherever the Tyranid threat next decides they yeah. wish to devour. Okay. We must scour them from the stars before they do the same to us. Chaplain Orton Cassius, Ultramarines Master of Sanctus City. That was badass. I love the Tyranids so much. Love them. They're so... So dangerous. And so disgusting and effective and so horrifying. I love them. Yeah. Uh, that, that was cool. That was a very cool one. But I... You knew I love them, so... And Nurgle perhaps loves them as well. Perhaps he doesn't, though. Um, I mean, they're eating a lot, so... <laughs> who knows? Perhaps perhaps they're Nurgle in the real space. Um, yeah, so that was Tyranids. Next are Tau, and after that we will do another poll. Um, I will probably do the Bricky video after that, just to, to do it, because I promised I would do it. And after that we will go into Horus Horus and Mechanicus and stuff like that, and Hell's Reach, and, and, and all the cool stuff you recommend, like I've got a hundred things on my list, and that's not uh, exaggeration. So we've got some stuff to watch, and uh, yeah, uh, some, someone said that there are smaller creators that also do info videos, so you can link them as well, because you know if there are small channels, perhaps it helps them out if I react. I don't know. And perhaps uh, everyone grows. That would be great. Um, yeah, if you like this, consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye.